Hi. Good morning. Ah. All right. Let's get, let's do this. Okay, look at me. Hi. I, Brad Paul Avenshine, publicly repent and confess I was in error. <laughs> you know, I have often in many of my videos have publicly confessed unto all of you that I struggle with pride. But when you have several brethren bringing to your attention certain things, and this morning a uh, beloved brother of mine sent me an email, and that was kind of like, okay, Lord, okay, Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen? So, this is in regards to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Okay? And again, I, Brad Paul Avenshine, hereby publicly repent and confess I was in error and... This is a correction. Okay? Can you handle that? <laughs> you know, April 28th was 12 years that I have been saved. 12 years. April 28th. Uh, in the bathroom at my employment, where I am still employed today, I, as a broken man, took my knees on a cold concrete floor and uh, confessed that I was a sinner, no good, couldn't save myself, crying like crazy, and called upon the name of the Lord, and I got saved. Twelve years ago on April 28th. And, um, <laughs> what a, wow, wow. But! Like I said, this is a public repentance and confessing I was in error and a correction. And you know, brethren, the longer you walk with the Lord, you will be able to recognize when the Lord is lovingly correcting you. And several brethren have brought this to my attention, and I agree with what they had brought to my attention such as uh, Brother Brian Denlinger uh, addressing this, and uh, a beloved brother who is, uh, who is now working again, Brother Jeff Jones. Uh, praise the Lord, Brother Jeff. You see this? Praise the Lord. I am so happy. God is good. And then this morning, uh, a brother brought to my attention, um, you know, about First John 4, and um, when these things happen, you strip away everything and you go straight to the Lord. And you go to this book. You don't go to commentaries. You don't go to other men. You don't do any of that. When correction is coming to you, you strip it all away, go straight to the Lord and to his book. King James Bible, the real Bible, okay? First and foremost, turn in your King James Bible to Proverbs chapter 3. Being one who to this day struggles with pride, there ain't no way when the Lord brings to your attention, hey Brad, um, there ain't no way I'm going to be stiff-necked. Because if you're going to do that, you're going to reap heavy consequences. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Go there, go there, please. Go there with me. In the King James Bible, the real Bible. Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. 
My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Hebrews chapter five, uh, chapter twelve. Excuse me. Hebrews chapter twelve. Hebrews is written on to the Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. But we're going to read this. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 on to verse 12. Go there. Hebrews 12, verses 5 on to verse 12. We begin at verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. <laughs> For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits, and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, <laughs> I gotta love this verse. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit, peaceable, peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Note the peaceable. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. We'll read verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Peaceable in verse 11. Look at that. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And I also got to throw in now, go back to Proverbs chapter 27. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Do I love my interpretations more than I love the Lord and the truth of his word? No. <laughs> and let's remember Revelation chapter 3. Yet you knew I had to throw this in there too. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Revelation 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. <laughs> Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. You know where we're going. 1 John chapter 4. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through verse 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try. Now, it says try, not test. Okay? I, in other videos, have stressed that. That, do you really want to test the spirits? I have. And this is a video where I am repenting and um, correcting these things, okay? And confessing I was in error. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and that and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it is that it should come, excuse me, and even now already it is. And now already is it in the world. <clears throat> now, here's the thing that personally I was struggling with. I have put 1 John verse uh, chapter 4, verse 2 into practice outside my door. Never once... Have I used it as a litmus test? What do you mean? I've never gone up to someone who I knew was lost. And first thing. Hi, my name's Brad. How you doing? Can you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Or to professing Christians. I've never gone up to them. And the very first thing I've done is like, hi, my name is Brad. Can you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? I've never done it like that. Never. Never. For example, Mormons who use the King James Bible, within the context of conversation, I have asked them that. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? When they were at my door. You know what the one kid said? He said, Jesus is come in the flesh. Oh. Within the context of the conversation. Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses. They, they kind of don't count, but again, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. <laughs> They've messed it up, of course, Jehovah's. Several pastors who I have spoke with who were preaching and teaching heresy themselves within the context of the conversation. Uh, okay, you're, you're teaching some pretty heretical things. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? The pastors in my locality that I have asked that to within the context of the conversation. Not one has gotten it right. Personally, I believe all the pastors that I have spoken to within my con uh, my congregation here, uh, you know, the town that I live, they're hirelings. Okay. <clears throat> Dave even tried, the, the one even tried to correct me about kind of like what everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit has done. That it's archaic. Give me a break. <clears throat> With those, uh, even among the homeless people, and I, I do a lot of witnessing onto the homeless, um, who say they are Christians. You talk with them. You know, talking with them. Uh, 
do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? And with professing Christians, one um, John, one gentleman who um, got it wrong, and I showed him what it says, and he's like, "Oh well, yeah, I do confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh." Yes, that has been my struggle with all of this. I confess it because. In putting into it into practice like that, I have yet to see and hear someone within conversation who is not truly saved be able to pass to say that. But here's the thing. Can it be faked? Rather... Is it the smoking gun? Now, I have said in comments, for example, to um, to Brother Matthew, uh, uh, to Divisive Inheritance, uh, Divisive in er, uh, Divisive Inherentist. <laughs> I've even said that it is the smoking gun proof test. In a video, what is a King James Bible believer? I have said that it is the smoking gun proof test. Um, I kind of believe it is the way it is applied, but can it be faked? I have to confess that I believe it can now. Now, there have been certain people who have been able to skirt it by replacing by, instead of saying, I confess, saying, I believe. And a brother and I did a wonderful Bible study on the difference between believing and confessing, which was a beautiful Bible study that he and I engaged in over the phone. Okay? But, let, but then again, brethren, like I said, thy word is truth. Absolutely. But as this beloved brother of mine this morning mentioned, are we perhaps taking it out of context? Yes. Yes. You don't use 1 John 4, verse 2 especially, like I said, as a litmus test. You don't. Okay, you do not. But as a brother said to me this morning in an email, that, well, that I got this morning, he asked, well, could we be taking it out of context about people who are prophesying or divining? And you watching me, brother? Yes. Yes, you are right. And several brethren have brought this to my attention. Uh, the one brother had uh, put uh, two links to two videos. And in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Hello. And I struggle with pride. But when the Lord is the one who is bringing to your attention, hey, Brad, you might want to reconsider this. You have two options. You can either buckle them knees and say, Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy end endureth forever. You are right, and I am wrong. Or you can stiffen that neck of yours and be like, I refuse to receive it. <laughs> And I have only been saved for 12 years. There ain't no way I'm going to be hardening my neck and refuse to receive correction. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen, brethren. Now, as regard to videos where I brought this up, I'm not deleting them. I ain't going to play that. Okay? I want you to see this. Okay? 
Because like I have said, I struggle with my pride. But when it's the Lord who's knocking on your door and lovingly correcting you, you better take it and confess and repent, which I am doing. Now, like I said, the problem I have been in struggling with this, I haven't heard it from outside my door and witnessing on the people. I have not heard it from someone who I know is lost. I haven't heard it personally. I haven't. I, I can't deny that. I can't. But I am in error saying that it is that it cannot be that it cannot be faked. Outside my door, I have not encountered someone who I know for certain is lost <laughs> who is able to fake it. Outside my door, okay? You got to remember, brethren, a lot of the people who we are encountering here on YouTube are trained and can train themselves to pass it. Even though there is one specific individual who I'm not naming who replaced confess with believe. Kind of skirting it. Because thy word is truth, see. But there again, as Brother Brian Denlinger said, they can confess it all day long. What is your testimony? This is truth. First John 4 verse 2 is truth. Yes, absolutely. But as a dear brother said to me this morning in an email, well, at least that I got this morning. Yes. We can be applying this, and I believe many of us have been applying this in the improper context, taking it out of context. And I repent. And I am correct, and I have been corrected by the Lord in the mouth of two or three witnesses. I cannot deny it, and I will not. Like I said, I struggle with my pride, but when it's the Lord, the one who is um, correcting you, showing you, y'all better take heed. And I am taking heed. Like I said, I've only been saved for 12 years now. And you go ahead and search all my videos if you are so inclined. I have never once referred to any of this, what I do here, as a ministry. This is my passion, not my profession. Several of you have referred to what I do here as a ministry. I personally have not. Okay? I don't consider myself a preacher. Several brethren have said, well, Brad, you know, by definition, what you're doing, okay, fine, whatever. You want to call it that, fine. This is my passion. This is what I am passionate about. Beg your pardon. Still, uh, still in my morning coffee. But, um, yes, brethren, I was in error. Even though I have not encountered it outside my door and putting it into practice myself out there, never as a litmus test, never, but it does say try the spirit, okay? I haven't encountered it. Does that mean that someone who is trained can uh, fake it? I have to confess that yes. Someone trained can fake it. Someone can fake it. 
and I repent and I correct myself. Oh, I, I will take correction. Beg your pardon, Lord. I take correction. And to the brother and the, the brother who sent me that email this morning, that was kind of like the, okay, okay, all right, <laughs> you got it. Do a search. It's like, okay. See, I'm easy like that. Okay. <laughs> when the Lord is the one who is doing the correcting through brethren. I bend that knee right away, boy. What about you? What about you? Because if you stiffen your neck and refuse the correction that comes from the Lord, you're going to be in big trouble. And remember the peaceable, let's go back there to Hebrews chapter 12, okay? Remember in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, go there please. Now, uh, Hebrews 12, 11, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Peaceable. See, I have peace with what I'm saying to you and with what I'm doing. Had I not, there is no peace. Get it? Those out there here on YouTube who refuse correction, they can say, oh, I have peace. I doubt it. No. No. So, <clears throat> I do got to go to work. I still got a lot of things to do this morning. But I had to address this, especially now, seeing that it is in the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's when you got to be like, okay, okay. And I struggle with pride. But when the Lord is the one through the body of Christ who is uh, bringing it to your attention. So again, I leave you with this. I, Brad Paul Avenshein, repent of my error. I confess that I was in error. And I received the correction and chastening of the Lord. Even though I have not heard it outside my door when I've applied it myself in practice, 1 John 4, 2 can be faked. This is truth. Absolutely. It is in the context in the way that we apply it, brethren. You don't apply it as a, as a litmus test first. Okay? And I was in error. And I received the correction and chastening of the Lord. And I am at peace with this. So, and brother who sent me that email this morning, thank you. And to brother uh, Jeff Jones, praise the Lord that you're working again, brother. Um, I haven't been on YouTube. I got the notification. I love you. I'm praying for you. And that's great. And he also sent me uh, several links about it. And I, um, I received correction from the Lord. So. Thank you very much, brethren. I love you. Gotta go. Y'all have a wonderful day.